If you have a W210 with command navigation, you will have a factory auxiliary port inside the glove box. This will allow you to connect your phone to the radio and you'll be able to stream your own music, which is nice. However, there is really not a nice Bluetooth solution. So up until now, I've been using this battery powered auxiliary Bluetooth streamer, which is right here. So it works just fine, it plugs in, but the only problem is that it's battery powered, so obviously the battery will run out. And when you plug it in to charge while driving, you will get the alternator whine. So that's pretty annoying. And also you have to power it up every time you want to use it. So it's not powered with the ignition of the car. However, I did find a great solution to this. I will post a link in the description if anyone is interested. This will wire into the car with the power on ground and then plug into the auxiliary. So this is what the package comes with. This is the module right here that will stream the Bluetooth. So we have the RCA left and right. This aux port right here is for a microphone, which is included. And there's the power on ground. So you will need to buy an adapter. And this is what the adapter will look like. We'll just plug into the RCA red and white and then go to auxiliary. And then you plug this into the car's auxiliary port and then you will have Bluetooth audio. And I'm also gonna try to plug in the mic somewhere, probably in the ashtray, cause I do wanna use this to make phone calls as well. So the only problem with this, it only acts as auxiliary. So it does not give you any functions that will actually control your phone through the radio or through the car's buttons on the steering wheel. This will not work that way. This will only act as a Bluetooth auxiliary port, which is still better than nothing. So unfortunately, unlike the E39, there is no Blue Bluebus type solution to this car where you can actually control your phone through the factory radio. So this will have to do for now. In case anyone didn't know how to access the auxiliary port, once you power on your command display, so let's say you're in the FM menu or CD, whichever one it actually really doesn't matter. You can go to this SVC button right here, and you're gonna use this right knob to turn and select the aux. And now the auxiliary audio source is selected. And then from here, you can uh, click on sound if you wanna adjust your EQ, go back. And then as long as aux is selected, you can go back to this menu if you wanna just see the time or even navigation. But uh, once you switch to CD, or FM, it deselects the auxiliary audio source. So just keep that in mind. So to get started on my car, I'm gonna take apart the glove box and the center console section. Okay, I'm gonna start by opening the cup holders and the ashtray to remove this wood trim. So all you gotta do is pull up and it comes right out with the shift surround. Just pull that up, put off this side. And then for this, I'm gonna actually remove the switch panel for the windows and disconnect the ESP and the sunshade. So these connectors just come off easily. And then for the window switch panel, you slide the left and right lockers down as well as the center one. And this one just comes off and we can push these through like that. So here it is removed. I did that because I didn't wanna make the windows relearn auto up and auto down. So now we have these two Phillips bolts for the ashtray and I'm actually gonna remove the ash tray section right here and then we'll remove the bolts and take it out so you just kind of pull towards you and it will kind of get loose like this and then slowly fold it in and you wiggle it out you might have to move the shifter back actually you'll have to disconnect the power to the cigarette lighter so i've moved the shifter back to drive and i pull it out and that's the electrical connector right there so remove that and then move on all right so next up i'm going to remove the climate control unit so we will need to have these special tools to slide into those slots and pull it out Here's what the tools look like. So we just insert it into the slot. Make sure the keys are mirrored to each other. And then I'm gonna slide it in until it clicks and then the whole thing just comes out. You need two hands and just unplug it. So once that's removed, we will come down here and we will see there are Phillips screws at the bottom. We'll have to remove those. So once the screws are removed, this will become loose. So you just pull towards you and down. See, it's slotted up here, and then this will come out of the way. So you can disconnect this if you want, or just move out of the way. So I just decided to keep mine out of the way. And now we have some Torx bolts right here, which hold the radio in. So we're gonna take these out next. So these are Torx T20. So once those are removed, this thing is ready to come out. Just carefully slide it out. And then once you get enough access, disconnect it. To remove the glove box, all you will need is a Phillips screwdriver. So I have two, a long and short ones. So the short one we use for the top screws on the inside of the glove box. So all it is is one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So it's probably really difficult to see, but if we look next to the light, there's a hole for a screw right there. And the same thing on the other side. 
a short Phillips will be handy for that. So the bottom screws have these covers on them, so all you gotta do is just pry up and they'll come right off and they will expose the two Phillips screws on the left and right side. So once you have all the screws removed, you have to remove the light, so just kind of pry down from this part right here and it'll come out and disconnect it. There's just a clip on that light and that will come right out. Just tuck the connector up in there so it doesn't get stuck. And now the glove box is ready to remove. So what you wanna do is kind of hold it towards the bottom right here, left and right, and pull out towards you. So this is gonna feel kind of terrible. The friction that holds is pretty tough. So you're just gonna wanna wiggle it from, like I said, our hands are right here and right here and then pull towards you. And with some gentle force, it'll come out. It will feel way worse than it is, but just push through it and you'll get it out. Okay, initially I did want to do it through here, but it was actually more difficult to find power on ground through here than it was through the glove box. So we just tapped into the power for the light because that runs on position one and two. And then the auxiliary port's already here anyway, so it just made sense. So I currently, as you can see, I spliced into the connector for the light. It's probably not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. So we'll see, here we go. We, and I did have a connector here that I could remove it if I wanted to. And then it comes down to the module right here. It looks pretty messy right now because I have everything plugged in, but we'll make it look a little bit better. We'll see, we have our adapter here for the auxiliary. Unfortunately, my auxiliary cable is really long. So we'll see, it plugs in from there to the factory auxiliary port here. And then I do have as well the microphone plugged in. So I'm gonna run the microphone through the glove box through the center console all the way down to the ashtray and mount it somewhere hidden here. Okay, we have everything tucked away. I zip tied all the cables here, so it's tucked away. It will hopefully not make any interference with the glove box. We'll see this black wire is running behind here. It goes behind the radio and into the ashtray, and it is very clean. I could actually remove it very easily if I had to, so I'm very happy with that. So now, I will uh, put everything back together, but just to show you my setup. So we have the main wires coming off here being spliced. So this will go in the back and then this will go up top here. And it appears I will have enough room. So that's good. All the Bluetooth stuff right here and the auxiliary port being tapped. And the microphone there. So once this is closed, you'll never see and when it's open, you will. So I'll get everything wrapped up and show you. All right, so the Bluetooth install was a success. However, we do have this alternator wine and it is dependent on the engine revs as you see when I rev it up it does alter the sound so I did buy a inline filter to kind of cancel this out so let's go ahead and take a look so this is a noise filter I got it is the Smoff brand I got on Amazon and I will post a link in the description in case anyone was interested so let's go ahead and put it on and see if it works all right so for me I'm going to plug the filter right here where it goes directly to the car's auxiliary port from my adapter so here it is plugged in. So that's where the adapter goes from the Bluetooth and then it goes into the car's auxiliary port. So let's go ahead and test it and make sure it works. All right, good news is that the filter worked. So car's on, audio's up. You kind of hear that hissing, that's normal. And it will rev the engine a little bit. All right, so the volume is up pretty high. And here I'm gonna put the phone next to the speakers and you'll hear any, any of the alternator one if there's any. I don't know how it shows up on camera, but that's nearly imperceivable to me. Especially if you have music playing, you will not hear it. So that was a success. All right, so this is gonna be the final wiring setup for me. So I have all the adapters right there, the Bluetooth and the RCA to 3.5 millimeter. Then I have that going to the adapter and to the actual factory auxiliary port in my car. So see it's plucked off to the side, so it won't interfere with the glove box. And then this is the cable for the light, which will go on top and this will get pushed back so that's the final setup. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, I know, but this is gonna work and this provides power on accessory and there's no more alternator wine, which is what I wanted. It's not the best setup to do it with a filter. It's always best to find a better power source than this, but this is just the easiest way to do it for me. So right now, since we have access, this would be a great time to do your cabin air filter. So I would say go ahead and do that. But otherwise we're done. All right, so the installation of the Bluetooth module is complete. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So as we open the door, I do have the ashtray open and that is the only thing that you can see that is not exactly like factory. So we have the microphone coming out of here. This is the only evidence that anything has been tampered with in this car. So as you saw, I have it running behind the ashtray here to kind of minimize on cutting anything. So obviously the only thing that we actually ever even cut into that's not factory is the wiring in the glove box for the, the light. Otherwise, this is a very seamless solution. So I do just have this clipped into where the cigarette would go. So if we unclip it here, 
You see, I just have it clipped into that little tab right here. Otherwise, this is completely removable still. And we'll see. It just goes behind there. So this ashtray is still removable fairly easily. We just have to sneak the microphone through. We kind of just bring it down a little bit and get out of the way if we unbolt it. So this does not impact serviceability at all. I am actually really happy with the placement of the microphone. This is actually not a bad spot for it. It actually does sound pretty decent in a phone call. And another benefit to having the microphone placed here is if we close the ashtray, it does not interfere with the microphone at all. So if you're not using the microphone, you have the ashtray closed, your interior is unmolested. There is no microphone dangling from anywhere. Usually like ICP will put them up here or somewhere up here. It would have been nice to place it in the factory position, which is right here. However, I do not want to pull the headliner to the router microphone there. So this to me was a no-brainer solution to have it in the ashtray. If you have a car with command navigation equipped from the factory, most likely your auxiliary port will be inside of the glove box. And of course, that was the case with this car as well. And at some point in this car's life, there was a record showing at the dealer that they did replace this glove box. Luckily, the key still works. However, when they did replace the glove box, they did not put the actual correct glove box for this car in here. As we'll see, it is smooth here. There is no auxiliary port. So your car will have the auxiliary port in here. So the way I would do it is I would run the wire through here to kind of wrap it around and stick the Bluetooth streamer right around here. That is previously what I was doing, except my uh, my auxiliary port is behind the glove box now, so it's hidden. So this actually worked out better for this application. However, when I had the Bluetooth streamer, I did have the auxiliary port running in here and had the streamer plugged in here. So the way that you would do it if you want to replicate my setup on your car, if you have the auxiliary port right here, is you would obviously tap into this light, but then the power wire would come in through the side, come out of here, and you would have it plugged right in here. And you would also have to run the wire for the microphone through here as well. Those are the only two wires you'll need. So you'll have a little bit more stuff in the glove box, but I'd rather have a little bit more stuff in here and get Bluetooth streaming than not have it. If you really want it to be more hidden like mine, you could just pop out your auxiliary port right here and throw it behind the glove box. This way, it's a very clean setup. So besides my glove box being incorrect, there is literally no way to tell that this car has been modified besides that microphone there in the ashtray. And if we close that, it's a very nice hidden solution to keep your OEM radio and have Bluetooth. So just to recap, I did tap the wire from the light. Doing that, you will have alternator wind when the car is on. That is why I use that little noise filter. And that noise filter actually did work. There's literally almost no noise. Like if you really have the volume up high and have nothing playing, you will hear a little bit of something, but it's nothing crazy like it was before. If you have the volume at a normal level with nothing playing, I don't hear anything. And if you have anything playing at all, no matter what volume, there is no alternator whine or any sort of weird noise at all. If you know wiring better than me, which I'm not an expert, and this is definitely not the cleanest setup, I'll be the first to admit that, you should just find a better power source than this light, this power source on the light. It was just easy for me, it was quick. That's why I chose to do it this way. Otherwise, if you have a better solution to tap into power, possibly through the radio, I would do that instead. So like I said, I chose the light in the glove box because it works in position two. So this does not come on. Otherwise, it only works in position two. You can have the doors open and you can have the map lights open and this does not come on. So here's my key. So we will go ahead and put in position. Well, one definitely works. So one is accessory and two. And of course, when the car is on, it stays on as well. And if I do push this in, it does not affect the power source to the auxiliary streamer. This only affects the light output. So I will always have a position two power to the streamer this way. All right, so now I've switched over to another phone to record this. So this is the phone I use every day. Okay, so after the initial pairing of the Bluetooth streamer, which it is some like weird name, you can actually rename it too, of course. So that's what I did. But the point I'm trying to show here is that the phone is right here. Bluetooth is on the phone. I always leave it on and I'm going to put the key in position two. All right, so this is just uh, stimulate the car being on. I'm not actually going to uh, turn the car on here. But now if we go look here, we'll see that connected automatically. And I did name the Bluetooth streamer after my car. So if we go to settings right here and Bluetooth, we will see... So I named it after my license plate. It is just some generic name if we take it out. So you see that's the name it was, Shugo 2022. So I just renamed it.
So that's something I actually really like that when I turn the car on, the phone automatically connects. So super happy about that. So now I do have the radio turned off. I will turn it on. And I just leave it on the auxiliary audio source at all times. So now I could just start playing music. So here we have it on auxiliary audio source and you can obviously of course adjust your EQ how you want it. But I just leave on the default for this video. So we will play some music here. So this is the uh, music I use for my videos, in case you wondered, it is from Harris Heller, it is copyright free, so we'll go ahead and play. And it's probably hard to pick up on camera, but the audio quality is pretty much on par with what it was before. Even when I had the phone connected directly to the aux port, uh, there is, if we'll hear, if we turn it up a little bit, there's a little bit of minor hissing right here. This is with the volume up really high. So that's only when music is not playing. When you have the music turned up and you have the volume up here, there is no hissing at all. And of course, if the car was on, there'd be no alternator whine either. And so just to uh, recap on that alternator whine noise I'm talking about, if you do not have that filter that I used, you will 100% have that whine. So just be sure to buy that same filter I used and you will not have that issue. Another thing I also want to mention too. So when I am playing music here, I have the volume on the phone turned all the way up. So this is just what works best for me. Obviously, like if on your phone, on your device, whatever, uh, play around with your settings. You could probably find something that works better for you. But that's just how I run it on this phone. Okay, so if I were to get a phone call, let's show you what it looks like. So we'll see that there's nothing actually ringing through the car speakers, it's just a phone. So my phone's on vibrate, so it is vibrating. So if we answer the call, I did put on mute just so that we don't get massive feedback. So obviously when you're taking a phone call with this, you're going to want to open up the ashtray so you can use a microphone. And this should automatically redirect audio through the mic and through the car speakers. You shouldn't have to fuss with it at all. Now one thing I did notice that the audio of the phone call is much louder than the music so I believe you can adjust this in settings on most phones. So right here I could bring it down a little bit and it should match the music much better. So if I were to hang up right here the music stays at the same level so now that the audio won't go overbearing when I uh, switch back from my phone call. So in my car when I'm driving I generally like to have my phone right at the ashtray so I'll show you what I'm talking about. I like to have it right about there and with the size of this phone it does seem to be just a perfect fit so with that the microphone is still exposed and if I were to take a phone call I can still use it and it still does sound pretty good so that's just the way I prefer it so this way I can actually just go ahead and answer the call and I generally just have music playing on like whatever playlist so I don't have to screw around with it too much but that's just the setup that I do when I'm driving this car so here it is with the shifter and drive. You have ample access to the phone. You can clearly see what it shows. You can skip and pause and all that. This Bluetooth streamer will not allow you to use any of the buttons on the steering wheel at all. You can just adjust the volume here, but that does not adjust the device volume, that adjusts the car's volume. So that's just the same thing as adjusting the volume on the command display. This has no effect on the actual phone at all. So forget about using these. And of course on the display, you only see audio aux, you don't see any sort of information. This is just using the auxiliary port and having a Bluetooth streamer stream auxiliary. It's nothing fancy, so just keep that in mind. So now I'm going to actually demonstrate the audio quality you can expect to get through the setup uh, during a phone call. I'll show it inside the car and I'll show it on the receiving end as well. Okay, so the fans are at about 40% on the interior. I have AC going, so now I'm going to rev the engine to about 2,000 RPM to stimulate kind of driving. So uh, keep in mind that the phone and the microphone that is recording is close to the car. So the way I'm gonna record this is my car is actually outside the garage right now, but the garage door is closed. And I do have a uh, microphone attached to the camera. So this should kind of minimize on the outside noise you're hearing. But uh, keep in mind that may also be a factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and start revving it. So this is about 2000 RPM. This should stimulate about average driving on the street. So this is what you can expect to hear. Uh, from inside the car. It's just just that really audible and clear and easy to understand. I'm like in a normal driving position. I'm not like super close to the microphone and my phone is right next to it as well. 
And so here we're back in the car. I have the engine off, but the phone is disconnected. So anything you hear right now, when the closest speaker, that's just what it sounds like disconnected. So of course there's gonna be just a little bit of feedback, but we can of course mute it. And of course I would just have it turned off if I wasn't using it. So that was a demonstration of how this solution works. I think as of right now, this is the best way to do Bluetooth if you wanna retain your command navigation. And I, I wanna retain it. I do like how it looks. And the fact that it has auxiliary in already makes it a little bit easier. And in my opinion, the microphone does sound pretty good. So as you heard there in the phone call, the volume kind of gets dimmer on the phone call. So you will have to raise it up. Um, I wasn't able to raise it up because obviously I was not in the car. But once you raise it up, it's actually uh, pretty clear. It's really not that bad at all. It sounds, it's very audible. Like you can definitely understand what the other person's saying. And a couple phone calls that I've done, like in real life, not just testing. With the car moving, it like, the person on the other end said I sounded fine. It wasn't like muffled or any crazy noise. But of course, as you heard there, uh, if I did bring up the fan, we did hear the fan, which is of course to be expected. But the engine revving wasn't like an issue. And of course I couldn't stimulate wind noise, but I assume it'd be very minimal. But yeah, that's just me sitting in a normal driving position with the microphone right where it is. So overall, I think this is the best solution. It doesn't cost too much. I believe the Bluetooth streamer was about 20 bucks. The filter was about 20 bucks and then the rest is just your time. Oh, and make sure you do have the right adapters too. I do have to find an RCA to 3.5 millimeter jack adapter, so that will uh, add a little bit of cost too if you don't already have one. So I'm actually a pretty big fan of this solution and I would do it on every command navigation car I have. It's, I think it's a really clean setup. It does not disrupt the glove box at all and everything just works the way it should. And I love the fact that the phone connects automatically. The microphone actually does work and it sounds decent. So this is the best solution as of right now if you have a command navigation car, in my opinion. I don't think it gets any better than this. I did see that Becker makes a uh, adapter that works this way, but they do not have a microphone. So the audio calls would not be as good. I assume the streaming would be almost the same. Maybe they would have a better solution in terms of uh, the alternator wine. So this will have alternator wine, if, unless you get the same filter that I used. So that filter actually does work really well for the alternator wine. Of course, the proper solution would be to just wire it better this is just easier for me and in no way am i saying this is the best way to do it of course there's going to be people out there that know how to wire this particular car better than me so if you know a better solution please comment it below okay so if you stuck around to the end of the video i'm gonna uh, mention this i have had someone contact me and mention they are working on a module that will plug directly into the back of the command navigation unit it'll be a plug and play solution and the only thing you'd have to run is a microphone um, but it is going to be a solution to where you can uh, plug it in directly to command. So you'd be able to use these buttons here to skip, which means if you have a car with the steering wheel controls, these will work as well. And on top of that, I hear that the uh, phone functionality is coming to that uh, module as well. So you'd be able to answer and decline calls through the steering wheel as well. And from what I heard, it is a possibility that through this solution that we might actually be able to use the car's own microphone up here. So this is projected to come out uh, probably at the end of this year, early next year. This video is filmed in September of 2022. Obviously, if it comes out, I'm gonna film a video on it and show you how it works and installing it and all that. But uh, just, I would say, don't get your hopes up. I mean, anything's possible. And uh, I'm really hopeful that this solution comes out. If it does, this would be the way to go to retain all the functionality of the command, which I really do enjoy the system. So there it is. So everything that I've used will be linked in the description. So if you wanna replicate this setup, go ahead, check out those links. You can buy everything that I bought. And the instructions on what I did are up there. So if you know how to wire it better, go ahead, do that check the comments someone may have mentioned how to wire it better but that's just how i did it i'm sorry it's not the best solution but it was just easy for me like i said if you have any questions please feel free to leave them below and thank you for watching